The College Basketball Experience Georgetown Hoyas 2022-23 Season Preview Episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. Bet $100 at WinBet and get a $100 free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by the SGPN Merch Store. Use the promo code NFCBEAST for 15% off and active until the Eagles or Giants lose their next game. And let me tell you, they have these campus edition college t-shirts. Absolutely fantastic. So hop on over there and check that out. And then uh, do us this favor and let it ride. This is my team, Cleese, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome. Welcome to the college basketball experience. Georgetown Hoyas 2022-23 season preview episode. My name is Colby Swingin' Dan to base Dan, a.k.a. Pick Dunn D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and um, I don't have stress and I'm healthy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Talking something near and dear to my heart here. I am a fan of the Hoyas here. Still waiting for, uh, still waiting. Look, you know, well, let me introduce who we got on the show. This guy, former video coordinator for the University of West Virginia. And now he only worked under Hall of Fame coach Bob Huggins. Shout out to that. Uh, give it up for the host of the NBA Gambling Podcast, the host of the Ryan and Rush uh, show. Check out uh, those two things. Give it up for my guy, Ryan McIntyre. How you doing, Ryan? I'm doing good, Colby. We're going back to our uh, hometown roots here. Little Saxo Hoy in the DMV. Yes, and there's there's uh, so many levels that I want to talk about here as far as, like, Patrick Ewing, they're being generous. Before I get there, I want folks to remember to subscribe on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Well, first, subscribe to the college basketball experience. Then subscribe to the college football experience because we, we, we do those things, but we come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Ryan, we grew up in the area. We, yep. we we were growing up Redskin fans, and and now they're gone. And Dan Snyder's just destroyed that fucking team. And I feel like no one likes the Redskins anymore. Whether it's whether it's the name change, whether it's the uh, Dan Snyder just being a complete fucking asshole. I don't know, but I've long lobbied that this is I grew, you know I was right there. I grew up there, played football. This is a football town, right? It's a basketball town. Those two sports, I think can rule dc i know the nationals have came in there so Mm -hmm. georgetown what are you doing like i get it we got the football program in the patriot league let's invest in the football program i'm telling you that that i've said this about george mason they should invest the fan base wants football yes i'm telling you like I, i don't know who will step up will it be maryland will they finally you know start being good but i'm telling you that area in general George Mays. I know JMU's going up to the FBS. Uh, but another thing is, can Georgetown basketball get back to where it was? Because, man, doing your homework for this episode and you start to 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 really put things together as far as uh as far as you know what has happened with this program. And you know, I grew up a uh, child of the 80s, where Georgetown was one of the, the teams to beat in general, right? That was like I remember watching Alonzo Mourning, Dikembe Mutombo, Othella Harrington, Allen Iverson, all those teams, Victor Page. Um, Patrick Ewing. Yes. I mean, well, I don't remember him. I, don't, I mean, I, I remember watching, I remember yeah. watching uh, yeah. you know, the tapes in the 80s. My older brothers remember watching Ewing. But, um, yeah. but, I mean, this program was unbelievable for a long amount of time. If you look at this, 
I was going back. So John Thompson took over senior John Thompson, senior, that is took over the program in uh, 1972, 73, right? That was, he had a losing season in year one. Then from 1973, all the way to his final year in 1997, 98, they didn't have a losing season. They went that long without a losing season to give you an idea, folks. Patrick Ewing hasn't had a winning season in four years. He's only had one winning season in his, in his five years at Georgetown. You know, I, I'm not trying to throw shade at the guy. I was surprised to see he got a year six. Maybe it'll work out. I like, I like it when they give the, you know, not only is he a legend at Georgetown, I like it when they, uh, when, 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 you know, they invest in one of their own and they say, Hey man, we, uh, he he did have to deal with some crazy circumstances. COVID happened. Um, two years ago, he did get him to the NCAA tournament because he won the big East tournament, but had they not done that, they weren't going to be there. They weren't going to be in the NCAA tournament. What do you make of this program? And, and uh, man, just for so long, they were dominant. Like you go through and look at those years with John Thompson senior, obviously, you know, even John Thompson's son had some great years of uh, he had one 30 win season and then a, a, few, a lot of 20 win seasons. But man, you go back to John Thompson senior. I mean, he had, I mean, I'm seeing like three or four 30 win seasons in like a 10 year stretch this program was one of the program, like one of the best programs in the nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you make of the program right now? And what do you make of Patrick Ewing with the job he's doing? Well, it, it's obviously it's been disappointing so far. I mean, he coming off a year last year where they didn't win a single big East game. And it's hard to believe that we're even saying that considering this is Georgetown. I mean, it seems like yesterday I've, remember it was Roy Hibbert, Jeff Green, and Patrick Ewing Jr. going to the Final Four. I think the year was like 2007 with uh, JT3 as the coach. I just worry that Pat Ewing is going to be just the next guy that fails at his alma mater like Mullins at St. John's on the football side. We just Drexler, saw it with Scott Drexler Frost. failed at Houston. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yep. On the football side, Scott Frost recently. I mean, it's just – it, it, it's tough going back to where you were king because there's a lot of distractions. I mean, I've been lucky enough in West Virginia to see a guy that was king at West Virginia and manage all the distractions, all the people that you grew up with. It's hard. I mean, you got the bullseye on your back and you got to, you got to please a lot of people and then people expect you to win as well. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it's not even, if you look at his coaching trajectory here, so year one, what, 15 and 15, year two, 19 and 14, year three, 15 and 17, year four, 13 and 13, but they won the Big East tournament and got in and lost to Colorado in the first round. Then last year, six and 25. I mean, I I hope for his sake, because I, I mean, I grew up a Nick fan. I love, I love, I love for Pat Ewing, you know, uh, but, ah, <sighs> I just, I don't know. I mean, I'll say this though. Let's let, before we, uh, before we, we dive into what the roster will look like and the turnover, let me, uh, let me at least rattle off last year. They were six and 25. They were Oh, and 19. Oh, and 19 in conference. Whew. <laughs> ATS. They were 13 and 16. So they weren't even a good team to bet on, uh, 13, 16 and two. That is, uh, they were 140th in adjusted offense, 228th in adjusted defense. Pat Ewing played for Pat Riley and Jeff Van Gundy. Do what that defense? Come on, you got to be, got to have. They were defensive coaches. Come on, uh, 138th in shooting the three, 54th in offensive rebounding, but 251st in defensive rebounding, free throw shooting. They were actually 54th in the nation. That's good. Uh, 43rd in pace. Once again, disproving the whole pace thing. Um, and 211th in taking care of the ball. So just a nightmare. I mean, th- th- are you surprised by any of those stats? Not really, right? Because of how bad that record was, right? No, I mean, they were they were dreadful. And, you know, the, to add back to the Pat Ewing thing, he wasn't one of these guys that just got the job because his name was Pat Ewing. Like, you could argue that because Penny Hardaway. He got the job because his name is Penny Hardaway. Pat Ewing was on an NBA bench for 15 years. He was an assistant coach with the Wizards, Rockets, Magic, Hornets. He paid he paid his dues to get the Georgetown job, in my yeah. opinion. 
Yeah. So it's um, been disappointing, man. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it's going to be very interesting to watch. It's a critical year for him. And uh, let's uh, let's hop into it because, uh, well, first off, I want to key in on the portal. Um, well, I guess I guess I should talk about what what is no longer there. Also, uh, they lose Donald Carey. They lose Caden Rice. Uh, they they lose Colin Holiday. All those, or I'm sorry, Holloway. The, all those guys. Uh, Aminu Muhammad was was a beast for them last year as well. Uh, Jordan Riley, Tyler Beard, Timothy uh, Igofe, go, all gone, all gone, and uh, especially the Holloway, Rice, Carey, Muhammad losses are all huge. They're all huge, but I do think. You know, Patrick went out and hired Kevin Nickelberry, the former assistant from LSU. Yep. Um, and I and not only is Nickelberry from Washington, DC, I think that's an interesting hire because I think he'll be able to bring in some talent. You saw he was there with Will Wade, and yes, they might have been paying players, but now it's legal. <laughs> that's why I'm saying that's why I'm saying Georgetown should should they got money. This institution's got money. It's it's in a big city with the NIL. There's no excuse for your basketball team being this bad, and I also think they should invest in football. I think both sports should be should be rolling. If you're Georgetown, what do you got to lose? You, uh, there's such a, a that city wants to root for a winner. And look, the Wizards have been slash Bullets, whatever you want to say, they've been trash. Commanders slash Redskins, they've been trash. The Nationals, you saw it; they showed up for that. But even now, they're terrible. So the city needs a winner. I think they would. I I think Georgetown, if they would invest correctly with their with their money in football and basketball, I think they could be really really good. Um, let's get to what they brought in. Well, first off, the portal is uh is very interesting because uh it's it's it's, it's 2022, so you can go anywhere, right? And I think it's hilarious that Wahab. Uh, Kudus Wahab or whatever the fuck, however you pronounce that name. Again. Um, he left Georgetown just a year ago, went to Maryland in College Park, right up the road. My mother went to Maryland. Uh, I know that. I know that it's not far. Now he's back in Georgetown, true. but meanwhile, meanwhile, Donald Carey, <laughs> former starting point guard for the Hoyas, goes to Maryland. It's like they're having trades. What's going on here on the Beltway? Uh. I think that's great to get them back, though, and I think they really, truly won the portal when I look at this. Obviously, Brandon Murray, the LSU get the four-star that was just really good in his freshman year there in the SEC. Huge get. Absolutely fucking huge get. They also brought in Bradley. uh, How do I pronounce this guy's name? Isirio. I'm probably butchering that. From LSU as well. So the Nickelberry effect having an impact immediately. Mm-hmm. Then, okay, they they lose Jalen Billingsley to Eastern Michigan. I don't think they're going to miss that. They lose Kobe Clark to what was that like? I don't know. Uh, was that uh, Incarnate Word? If no, Southeast Missouri State. Um, but they bring in a cook, a cook. How, how do I pronounce this guy's name again? A cook, a cook. Yeah, a cook, a cook. Uh, it's a great name. Yes, and he's from UConn. That was a huge get. I was shocked he left UConn, and and another one of these ones in conference that transfers. And then Primo Spears, if you watch Duquesne basketball, which I did, I thought Primo Spears was very talented. I think he's an underrated get, like what they did there. Then Jay Heath from Bobby Hurley and Arizona State, which I think is a good get. And then under the radar, this Bryson Mazone one from South Carolina Upstate. It'll be interesting to see how that transitions to Big East play, but I can tell you this, he lit it up at, at South Carolina Upstate. Whew, that's a busy, that's a busy Beltway 405 transfer portal right there. Uh, what do you make of all those new faces? Yeah, no, you mentioned it with Wuhab. He, I guess, just uh, went back and forth on I-495 to get over to uh, College Park and then right back to D.C. Getting him back was huge. A big rim protector. He's going to help solidify. You know, but you Patrick Ewing wants to protect the rim. He was a big himself. A cook, a cook. He's another – he's a long guy in terms of he can stretch the floor. He's athletic, versatile. Brandon Murray from LSU is a good get as well. And Jay Heath. I mean, they're, uh, they're starting five is going to be transfer you here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
But they're I thought they did. I thought they truly won the portal. I get it. You lost carry yes. a couple reserves. I thought they nailed it in the transfer portal. And I believe Georgetown fans should be optimistic about this season because of that. You could say, I don't know if Ewing's the guy, but hey, you gave it, you know, if it doesn't work out this year, you gave your guy a legend there. Yep. You gave him a long leash. And if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. But I think he did a great job putting together a team that will be able to compete and, and perhaps perhaps make a decent run in, in Big East play. Um, I want to project the starting five, but before I do that, uh, let, let me get us paid. I want to tell you folks out there that the Georgetown Hoyas 2022-23 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network presented by WinBet. Bet $100 at WinBet and get a $100 free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by No House Advantage. No House Advantage is changing the game by offering the most dynamic fantasy uh, fantasy sports platform available today. You can play and pick up contests versus other people for a shot at winning 250K in cash. Download the app, choose a contest, select your player props, earn points, and climb up that leaderboard for your shot to win big money every day. You can also test your skills against the house and win 20 times the amount of money you enter if you hit all your picks. And look, it's not just NFL, it's NBA, it's MLB, it's PGA, it's MMA, it's NASCAR. Sign up now with the promo code SGPN at nohouseadvantage.com or download the app in the App Store and get a first deposit match of up to $25. Uh, We're also brought to you by Babbel. If you're like me and there's a foreign language that perhaps you regret not learning in school, well, it's never too late to start with Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson. How great is that? So you can start having uh, real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. And look, they got other language learning apps use uh, artificial intelligence, but for for their lesson plans, that's a bunch of nonsense, all right? Babbel lessons were created by over 150 different language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers, uh, and look, you can learn more than 14 different languages, Spanish, French, Italian, German, uh, everything. They got, they got it all, right? Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel right now. Get up to 55% of your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash SGP. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash SGP for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, it's language for life, people. We're back talking Hoya football. I'm sorry, Hoya basketball. I'm excited about <laughs> Hoya football. Cooper Field, come on, let's go, let's go, let's get, let's throw some money in there. But I want to throw some money into the basketball program too, because I do believe Georgetown could really, really be good. NIL era, you're in a, a thriving city. Come on, let's go. Uh, if I had to project the starting five, which this is one where I feel like we just did Creighton, go listen to all our other previews out there in the Big East. That was kind of predictable. This one, you sit there and say, eh, they bring in a lot of new faces. Um, I would assume Dante Harris starts. I don't know. I just think you would want to stick with someone with familiarity with the program. Maybe. Maybe. Am I crazy? Um, so my assumption is that you go Dante Harris at the one. Heath at the two. Brandon Murray at the three, a cook, a cook at the four, Wahab at the five, and you get Primo Spears coming off the bench with Bryson Mazone. And then you still have Ryan Matumbo, by the way, we want to say and send best wishes to Dikemi Matumbo. I know, uh, yes, he's got some health things going on right now. Um, and, uh, then you also have Jordan Riley on that, but you got, a, and, and other things, you got a couple, a couple freshmen, uh, Deontay Bass and Denver Anglin that could be impact players on this team as far as the, the depth goes. When I look at that team, when I look seven or eight deep on that bench, I think there's a roster that is very compatible for the Big 12, not the Big 12, the Big East. What, what do you make of that roster? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think Georgetown's going to be much, much improved. Uh, you mentioned it. I think Heath Murray, a Cook, and Wahab, I mean, I think those guys are penciled in. Maybe Harris and Spears battle it out for the one, but they probably give it to Harris just because he's the lone returner. Um, the other thing I I forgot to touch on with this Hoyas team is a, you mentioned it with Nickelberry. Big Pat also added uh, Pat Baldwin Sr. on his staff from Milwaukee, another head coach. So he's got yeah. two guys that have been head coaches to help him 
maybe help them make decisions, X's and O's. So I think that's going to help this this team throughout the year. I mean, it it really matters, I think, how fast they can gel together. Yes. How fast can they gel together? Because there's nine new faces. Nine new faces. I can't wait to watch it. I cannot wait to watch it. Let's hop into the schedule and project the at a conference schedule first before we dive into conference play because we know the Big East is just such a grind. Um, it is going to be interesting because they open the se- so season starts on November 7th. Georgetown's got the night off that night, but the next night they are hosting Coppin State. Juan Dixon's the head coach of Coppin State. Remember, he won a national championship with the Maryland Terrapins. The Turks. Um, I kind of like the talent Juan Dixon's brought into Coppin State. Now, I'm not saying they're going to beat Georgetown, but if you are a Coppin State fan, well, first off, Coppin State actually plays back-to-back nights. I believe they, they play at Charlotte on the 7th. Then, welcome to life as a mid-major. Then back to D.C. to take on Georgetown on the 8th, right? Hear me out here. I think that helps Coppin State. They get the first game against Charlotte. Who knows if they win or lose that game. But I do think Coppin State's more talented than they've been in a while. Then they get to take on Georgetown with all these new faces. And they've already got a game under their belt. I, I look, I'm taking Georgetown to win the game, but for some reason, I kind of think that's a scary matchup, even though it's that it's, it's a big East team going up against cop and state. Yeah, no, I mean, you met, and it's a local game for cop and state in terms of them being from the Baltimore area. So, you know, they're going to get up for a DMV matchup. I'm going to take the Hoyas just because of the high major athleticism and skill. But I, I think Coppin State, you, you're right, it favors them that they already have a game under their belt. It's like the week zero in college football. Well, yeah, and it also I think it helps that uh, that Georgetown's this team of all these new faces. How like To me, if Coppin State was playing them on December 5th, you'd say, oh, they're, they're going to get rocked by Georgetown because they'd have all this you know, cotton, continuity would build up. Well, what better time to catch the Hoyas than game one? Yeah, no, I mean, like you said – with these transfer portal teams, like it takes a couple games for it to gel. And then they're always usually better late. So, I mean, the time that they're most vulnerable is early in the season. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, so then after November 8th, that Saturday, they get on November 12th, they get uh, Wisconsin green Bay, Tony Bennett's alma mater. Uh, that should be fine. I've watched uh, green Bay last year. They're not very good. They'll, they should be two and <laughs> there. Then they get the Gavit games, you know, uh, the Big Ten, Big East matchups. And uh, look, they draw they draw Chris Collins, former Duke player, son of Doug Collins. They get Northwestern, but it's in D.C. Northwestern lost Pete Nance. They lost Ryan Young. That should be a win. I think they win against Northwestern. I just think they're way more talented. How, how do you feel about that one? Yeah, I got them winning a close one. They need that. You're right. They need to win this game. This could be a nice jolt to their season. Get three and zero going to uh, Jamaica. Heading to Jamaica, I believe Pat Ewing's from Jamaica, so that's cool. Yep. And uh, take it on Loyola Marymount. Loyola Marymount's been a weird team. I, I mean, first off, I used, I used to live like five minutes away from Loyola Marymount. Now I'm probably about a 15 minute drive, but uh, they're ta- they're they're more talented than they've performed on the court, in my opinion. Um, that's a losable game. Although I expect Georgetown to win that game. I expect Georgetown to win that game, but Loyola, it's weird. Loyola has some players that, uh, it doesn't reflect their record, but I'm just saying for a one game they they, they have a, a, some, some decent players, but I think Georgetown will get that game. I got them four and oh, how about you? So rewind four years ago, Pat Ewing's first year. I was at Austin P at the time we were in that Jamaica classic. And so was Loyola and Georgetown. Loyola beat Georgetown in Jamaica in 2019, barely. So I'm going to go uh, Georgetown. Pat remembers that. They're going to get the revenge here in uh, the year 2022. I'm telling you, man, I used to live like five minutes. I could walk my dog to that campus. And they got the they got the Hank Gathers statue. They got some, some yep. uh, nice mural there of uh, Hank Gathers and Bo Kimball. And I, I, I would go up there and catch some games. And I'm like, this team's got some talent. I don't know how they yeah. would. I mean, I guess Gonzaga would always whoop their ass, but I still felt like they should have been better. They would just be susceptible for losses. But for one game, I always I always feel like that 
you could lose that game because they do have the talent. It's not like playing Green Bay where I look and I go, there's no talent on the floor. Um, and Dunlop was, Dunlop was the coach then when he was at Loyola when they beat Pat Ewing, so he's not there anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I yeah, I'm with you. 4-0. Then they're going to get LaSalle. Don't look now, folks, but Fran Dumfries, the, the head coach of LaSalle. I know. <laughs> I fucking love it. I, I love, love that it. guy. How fast can you make a uh, Pennsylvania coaching legend, you know, from a high school to a college level? Um, they get LaSalle or Wake Forest. I think it'll probably be Wake Forest because I don't expect Dumphy to make LaSalle super legit this fast. And Steve Forbes, year three, trying to schedule more aggressively. I know he thought he had a tournament caliber team last year, but the 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 at a conference schedule cost them. I think Georgetown's the best team in this tournament. On I'm paper. gonna go Wake. I, I'm gonna go Wake. I love uh, Steve Forbes, and I think he's gonna. I think that's a great championship game if that's the matchup, though, because you know Forbes likes to have transfers as well. So it's kind of a battle of the transfer teams. Yeah. I'm taking the Hoyas. Maybe, maybe there I'm a go. homer here. Maybe I'm a homer yeah. here. Let's go, Hoyas. <laughs> Wait, don't I have? I feel like I have some type of sound drop somewhere on this board of, uh, of the Hoya uh, Saxa. Uh, something I don't know. It's somewhere on this thing. I don't know where it's at. But uh, either way, I'm taking the Hoyas to get it done. I'm very excited for these uh, next. Well, then they come home and they they get a little slice of uh, of home pie. They get American. Yes. My mother grew up really close to American U. Uh, that should be a win. Jeff Jones is no longer at AU. That's a win. Yeah, no, I'm with, yeah, I'm with you on that. That's always a good game, though. I got them 6-0, and and then UMBC comes into town. Hey, you know, I kind of – I know uh, Ryan Odom is gone, but – uh, UMBC after that went and hired the, uh, the interim head coach from Penn state, uh, Jim Ferry, I believe his name is. And I kind of like what he's doing there. Could it be a dangerous game? Probably. I don't think they're there yet, but, uh, I mean, I, I have Georgetown winning this. I got them winning the national championship by the way. So let's go. <laughs> yeah. I got Georgetown sneaking by this game. Cause it's a look ahead to where we're going next. Love the retrievers though. Start your football. Program. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, Next, they go to Lubbock to end the month of November. I have them undefeated coming into Lubbock. And let me tell you, they don't just lose. They get fucking destroyed in Lubbock because <laughs> this this fan base, this is one of the hardest road games, short of like Cameron Indoor and the Fog. Uh, you put Lubbock, I think it's like a top five home environment. So I don't got them winning that. I don't even think it's close. You? No, I think they're going to get drilled. I think the DMV guys are going to find what West Texas is all about down there. They're that team. It's a tough place to go. Yeah. So that means out of the month of November, I got them uh, basically uh, what? I got them seven and one out of the month of November. If, if if that's the case, I think Georgetown fans will be thrilled with that, right? Yes. Okay. Then they host South Carolina and. South Carolina is bringing in the number one recruit in the nation. They are breaking in a new uh, head coach in Lamont Paris, but I think Georgetown's the better team right now on paper. Yeah, they got they got to get this one. You can't lose to Lamont Paris in year number one, even if they had the number one recruit. He is a freshman, so I'm taking the Hoyas in a bounce back after getting drilled in Lubbock. Then they get Sienna on December seventh. Shout out to their sweet ass. Uh, I know. What are they, the St. Bernard's or something? I forget. I know they have that great logo with like a, their home court, just a gigantic fucking St. Bernard. Um, yeah, I got them winning that. You? Yep, I got them in the this win call. This is a nice schedule, man, because their Solid. last their last out-of-conference game is going up to the Carrier Dome or whatever they call that now and taking on Syracuse and Jim Beheim. I look at Syracuse's team. I don't think it's that talented. I think Georgetown on paper is the better team. Can now Bayheim is a legendary coach. Could he out coach Patrick Ewing? Certainly. Uh, I'm, I'm taking them to win, dude. I think they're better. I, I, when I look at Syracuse's roster, bayheim has gone. Jimmy Bayheim. And uh, I just don't see a very skilled roster. Even my Syracuse. I was in Vegas a couple weeks ago. 
Uh, and I was, uh, went to, to grab a late breakfast and I sat at the bar solo, uh, and a bunch of Syracuse alum were at the bar too, getting ready. They were like, they went to Vegas for, uh, I don't know, some fucking rock concert or something, but we started talking sports and they, they were not happy with the, the state of the program right now. I'm telling you, I think, I think Georgetown could win this game. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I think they're going to go up to the up there and get a upset victory headed into Big East play. You mentioned it. This is a this is a great game because this is an old Big East rivalry. This I'm glad this game's being played, especially on, on ABC Saturday. Too. Afternoon. ABC yeah. nationally televised the way it should be. Yes, Saturday afternoon at the Q. So it's it's that that's going to be a good one. Comes down the wire. I'll take the Hoyas and get the upset. I'm with you, dude. I got the. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm sitting here. I'm like, I got them at. Uh, Seven and one. I got them at uh, what? Ten and one at a conference. If that happens. They might build Patrick Ewing another statue, right? I'm gonna say he's gonna get another extension. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, let's grade the rest of 2022 before 2023 starts. Uh, they open up conference play at home against Xavier and Sean Miller. No, I think that is critical that it's at home. And this is a gigantic game. You want to circle one that's super, super fucking important? December 16th, Friday, December 16th. Xavier coming into D.C. Sean Miller kind of walks into a veteran situation there. Uh, Sean Miller was previously at Xavier. He knows what it takes to win at Xavier. This is a huge game because I do think Xavier probably has a little bit better of a roster. It's in D.C., though. Yeah. I'm taking Xavier, but I think Georgetown can win this game. It's a fucking critical game, in my opinion. What are you doing here? I'm taking the X-Man as well. I mean, and uh, sneak peek, I, I'm, well, I'm pretty high on Xavier. So I think Xavier is going to get off to a good start in Big East play. T- tough opener for Georgetown. I, I'm with you. I think competitive game, but Xavier gets it done. So, yeah. So that would give them their second loss of the, of the season. Then they head to UConn. Ooh, a cook, a cook. They got them. They, 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 they're sal. You know, they, they cannot wait for this matchup. Um, I got you coming in that one. Yeah, Huskies roll. They're tough to beat up there. Then they head to Chicago a couple days before Christmas. I'm sorry, a couple days before the New Year, not Christmas. The take on DePaul and Tony Stubblefield bunch. This is a winnable game. Oh, give it. Give me it. I, they're going to get either Xavier or DePaul. They need it too. Yeah, no, I think this is the desperate zero and two team. They find a way to get the DePaul win. So one and two, Big East headed into the new year. So heading into the new year, you're sitting there yeah. saying we we only have three losses. I think that's fucking great. If you're a Georgetown fan, you'll take that right now. Right? Yes. Yeah. No, I I, I agree with you. I mean. The, that, it's a solid non-conference schedule again. Another team that's that's scheduled pretty well, I think. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, well, before I get to the rest of the conference play, or we're, we're not going to go game by game on every single game, but we're going to look at the toughest patch where they could perhaps make a case to get to the NCAA tournament, see how they project in the Big East. Uh, but before I get there, I want to tell you that the college basketball experience is brought to you by Fubo TV. If you watch football and basketball, you need Fubo TV. Fubo TV gives you complete coverage of college and pro football and basketball with uh, with NFL Red Zone. They got games in 4K at no extra charge. There's over 100 channels of uh, live sports entertainment for a fraction of the price of cable. You can watch it on all your devices. Never miss a game or an episode of your favorite show because they give you included cloud-based DVR. Plus, there's no contract. There's no commitment. You can cancel at any time. Right now, you can try Fubo TV for free for seven days and get 50% off your first month. Just go to FuboTV.com slash SGP. That's F-U-B-O-TV.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by Odds Trader. Odds Trader is a place to compare odds for all the major sports books. You can also compare the different sign-up codes and promo codes from sportsbook to sportsbook to assure yourself that you get yourself the best deal possible. It also has a bet tracker, so bettors can keep records of all your games and betting activity. So check out Odds Trader. Go to OddsTrader.com slash BlueWire. Odds Trader, the number one site for all your game day bets. All right, we are back talking Hoya basketball. I remember going to games back at the U.S. Air Arena. What a shithole that was. All right? <laughs> remember my guy Joey Brown playing point guard there. Uh, look, I, I don't want to go through every game because we don't know what injuries could, could play out. But I want to pick a three-game stretch. 
where we think Georgetown fans should say, oh, that's a brutal three-game stretch, but if we can grab a couple wins, uh, where do you think that would I mean, there's a lot of choices, I think, with the Big East. Yeah. Such a gauntlet. I can tell you the first one that caught my eye uh, is February 1st to February 8th. They are home taking on Creighton on February, Wednesday, February 1st. CBS Sports. Um, if they're able to knock off Creighton, that's a, I think if Creighton, you know, they're projected to win the big East in mm-hmm. almost every publication, I feel like if they can grab that dub at home, you really build, you get, that's a great tournament caliber win. And if you're waiting on selection Sunday, like I got a feeling Georgetown will be, these games are absolutely fucking critical because then, then on Saturday, February 4th, they get UConn. Once again, projected at the top three of the Big East in almost every platform that I've seen. Then they're at Providence, who won the Big East a season ago. And I think Providence is a team that's going to be competing with Georgetown right around the middle of the pack of the Big East. Those three games are absolutely fucking critical. And if you can just go two and one there, I think you know you could really be sitting on something strong. Getting, uh, I mean, imagine if they went three and zero there, you could yeah. be talking like, "Hey, we can do this." Well, you know, uh, is there a three game stretch besides that that you see that you say, you know, I know, I know, there's one in January that's appealing. I would say, yeah, you're probably looking at the at Villanova and at Xavier, and I I like that one better, especially with Seton Hall at home, just because. I know the committee values road games so much more than home games. Yeah. And you mentioned it. It's like they're going to be on the bubble probably with this roster um, if they have a good season. And you're going to be competing against the Seton Halls, the St. John's is for the – and Providence is for the, for the last couple at-large bids. So if you, can, if you can get a road win that can separate you, man, that really goes a long way come Selection Sunday. That's a great uh, January 10th home to Seton Hall, January 16th at Nova on Fox nationally televised. Then January 21st at Xavier in Cincinnati, Ohio. Wow. Wow. I mean, you're right. That's a great stretch there. Okay. Well, where do you have, I know this is in a, in a, in a vacuum. Where, where do you have Georgetown gun to your head right now? finishing within the Big East, and are they in the NCAA tournament this year, you think? I got them finishing eighth. So eight out of 11 because the Big Big East has 11 teams now, and I have them just missing the NCAA tournament. So a solid year, and I, under, and I wonder what happens with Pat after that if they have like a good year where they go, let's say, what, 18 and 15 or something like that and they're competitive, do they move on or do they give them another year where at least they showed strides this, this last year? I tend to think no, but, you know, he's such a legend there. Yeah. If anyone, it would be him that gets another another year. I mean, I was, frankly, I'm a bit surprised he's there now. But Yeah, especially after 0-19. Yeah, well, especially after their history. You go through their history and, like, Honestly, he has the worst coach they've had in like 50 years as far as if you were to blindly. I'm not saying Pat Ewing's a bad coach. I'm saying if you were just to blindly look at the records and I gave you exhibit yes. A, exhibit B, exhibit C, exhibit you know D, D, which would be the Ewing era, would be the worst one. Um, Agreed. Yeah. So uh, can't wait to watch it. Can't wait to watch it. I got him. I got him. So my projected order would probably be what I think I got. Uh, I think you're right. When I when I factor in that 11th, I think will be DePaul. 10th, yeah. I think is going to be Marquette this year. Agreed. Ninth, it gets a little, a little slippery. Like between seven, eight, and nine, I think Providence is probably going to take a step back this year. But how big of a step back? I like Ed Cooley. I trust his coaching. Um. Seton Hall's Holloway's first year. A lot of question marks there yeah. in uh, New Jersey. Uh man, I, I then you could say St. John's Mike Anderson's on the hot seat. If they don't start out well, you know, things that could turn into a disaster. Yeah. 
I'll join you at eighth. I wish we had more more disagreements, but I feel like it, that's <laughs> probably where I think I would pick them. Um, maybe you could talk me into seventh. Maybe you could talk me in the ninth. But I'm going to say they get in the NCAA tournament. First four. First four. You can see that. Yeah. If it, I mean, if it's close, you know they're going to want to put them in too. It's a sort of big pat draws. Yeah. Let's go, Hoyas. Yeah. All right, yeah, folks. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Invest in basketball. Invest in football. Don't be a square. I know all these people say, what are you doing? They're in the FCS. They get they're destroyed in the FCS. Well, it's a new fucking day and age. All right. The NIL is there. Invest. The, the, the city's thirsty. Thirsty for, for winning football and basketball. And the Hoyas can supply it, baby. I, I believe. Folks, subscribe to the college basketball experience because once the season tips. Oh. You're going to hear me just like in years past every single night of the season. You'll hear us talking games, talking best bets, talking best matchups. You better believe we're going to highlight that Syracuse game based off its history, its rivalry. Uh, and we love college basketball. So it's not only just all gambling based. It's also, you know, we got our heart in the right place. All right. Um, also subscribe to the college football experience. And yes, I do. The college football experience does do an FCS show. So if you are a Hoya football fan, we still got you covered there. Uh, and subscribe to the college baseball experience. We all come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Check us out and uh, check out the sports gambling podcast because that's the platform that started it all. Uh, also my, my friend here, Ryan McIntyre, you need to check out all of his work. First, give him a follow on Twitter at moneyline underscore Mac. And then, uh, check out the Ryan and Russ show. Check out the NFL gambling podcast. And, uh, all throughout the season, the college basketball experience. He'll be here talking games. All right, uh, folks. Uh, also, get the SGPN app. It's free in the App Store, or Google Play Store. And also, remember, come talk Hoyas hoops and Hoyas football with us in the Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. I cannot wait for this Hoyas team. Uh, it, it, every game is going to be must watch because of the stakes, right? You would just think every game, knowing. They gave uh, Patrick Ewing that that extra year. So I cannot wait to watch the Hoyas. I cannot wait for the season to start. And, uh, yeah, until then, uh, November 7th right around the corner. This is the Georgia, the Georgia, the Georgetown Hoyas 2022-23 season preview episode. You better start thinking about yours. And we are out of here. He was raised in the...